morning everyone. Sorry I'm a couple of minutes late, the window cleaner came. So I was just letting him finish and leave the drive so the dogs didn't go crazy to begin with. I'm sure they will at some point but we don't need to start like that do we? Good morning everyone. Hi Chef, Jitty, Sandra, Jean, Lorna, Camille, good morning. Hi Lucy, Bernie. Carol says, morning everyone from a dull South Devon, just the day for beading. Quite right too, get all cosied up indoors today I think. It looks pretty dull here. Had a gorgeous day yesterday, did a little nice, probably about four, four and a half mile walk with the dogs, that was lovely. Hi, good morning Kieran, Sue, Margaret, got lots of you here already. Good morning Kitty, she's watching too. So another week, back to Monday. I will, I will be with you on these lives every Monday and Friday. And Kitty and the lovely Sarah Payne um, divvy up the rest of the week. Um, you also saw us on Saturday. We had a lovely live. I came in with Kitty. We did some resin pouring, so that was lovely. Um, so today I'm going to make a torsade or torsade necklace, which means a twisted necklace, multi strands um, and twisted. Now I'm going to show you some top tips on how to keep your twisted multi strands twisted while you're wearing them because um, as some of you will know that it comes untwisted oh dean says just in my school work while watching you been a multitasking this morning i hope it's all going okay i know it's super tough doing it from home but well done getting up and getting your work done um so i've got these gorgeous strands of beads as you saw in the um picture just on the little countdown i've got some lovely bundles for you as well which i'll show you so these necklaces are gorgeous if you want to wear them just as multi strands so really nice very very simple you could even add in some seed beads you could do a bit of a bead soup so all those leftover beads that you've got and then with necklaces like these you can also twist them now i'm just going to twist this and then put it on so you can see that it's going to give you a lovely oh lucy says she's resin obsessed now really lovely sort of collar once it's twisted but you will find that as the day goes on and as you're moving and as you're wearing it they come untwisted so once i've shown you the initial setup i'm going to show you my top tip to keep these twisted while you're wearing them because as you can see if it starts to unravel it's not going to stay in the beautiful shape now the beads that i'm using today i'm going to pop you over onto the website because on friday we had so many sellouts while we were live and I don't want you to miss out. So I'm going to go and show you the website first of all. Oh, look, little sneak peek on them there. Um, head over to totallybeads.co.uk. We'll go up to the top categories, down to Facebook Live tutorials. We had the adjustable bangle on Friday. Um, many of those agate beads sold out while we were live. So I'm going to show you these ones quick sticks. Crystal and pearl bundle. Now there's blues golds and monochromes you may recognize these um, when I did my adjustable bangles back in the summer it was these bundles that we put together specifically for them so if you made those bundles of your memory wire bangles this is going to give you a matching necklace so I'm trying to give you the full suite um, I'm also using the large magnetic uh, clasps and tiger tail wire collots and crimp beads we've got a gorgeous pack of 10 different colors of tiger tail it just adds something a little bit different to uh, your makes and then if any of it's visible it still looks really nice it looks like it's integral to the design as opposed to just a plain silver and then it's just functional so you can pick your favorite colors pick your favorite clasps the bundles the picture that i was showing you a moment ago um was in the lovely golds you've got eight strands of beads it's uh, your glass rondelles in two different sizes and your pearls as well and then that's about it that's all we need now like i said you could use lots of other bits and pieces as well this is because sometimes i think the design element is the hardest part for you guys so we try to do the bundles so that we can put them together for you a lovely, this is the monochrome, lovely hues of silvers, creams, ivories, blacks, really, really beautiful. Um, and we're going to use six strands. So you've got eight. I'm going to use six strands in my necklaces. Um, I haven't got the blues to show you, but this is the golds. Um, obviously, you get two other strands with these as well, but these are just the six that I used in my necklace. And when they're twisted together, 
they just look beautiful. So if any of you like sort of your Russian spirals um, that Kitty creates with gorgeous seed beads and smaller beads, this is like a larger version of those and working with bigger beads. So if you're not great with small beads and seed beads, this is a nice way to do it. Um, Lucy says, I keep asking my old man how much I can have. I keep finding molds and inks and all sorts and he isn't impressed. I'm very sorry, Lucy's husband. He's going to be hunting us down uh, after all these videos, Lucy, isn't he? We've got you into so many crafts, but I'm hoping that it is helping you all pass the time. Does the colour wear off the, of the tiger tail? No, Carol, it doesn't. Um, it's a really lovely quality um, and you're not going to, you could use it um, as an exposed wire as well. So if you're doing like floating necklaces and things like that, it's going to be really lovely for that too. Okay, so the setup for the necklace, six strands. As you can see, it is quite chunky, it's quite big. We want all of those beads beautifully spaced so that we don't end up with a big chunky mess up at the top. We want it nicely and um, equally spaced out. So I'm going to do them in sets of two. So let's, for this one, Let's go, I'll choose one of the larger crystals because they're easier to thread on. I'm gonna set, um, set up the uh, six strands in pairs of two. So I'm gonna go for these two first of all. I've got two lengths of tiger tail here, good arm span so that it's, um, you can make, as, make them as long as you wanted. If you wanted them to hang down longer, of course you can. You need about half an inch uh, to an inch extra to allow for the twists because it does tighten it up and therefore it will ever so slightly shorten it so if you know for example you want an 18 inch necklace then I would be making them 19 inch uh, strands okay so we're going to first of all attach up onto the very top and I'm using crimp beads now these are a metal bead and they're actually soft so we're going to squash them um, if you've got crimping pliers uh, we're actually going to cover these with culottes so they will be hidden but if you've got crimping pliers they tend to squash them flat and then fold it into half so you can actually get um, quite a neat little finish with them here I'm going to use the culottes and the culottes that we have there's two different types on the website these ones are little clamshells and they already have loops attached to the top. So they aren't the ones with um, an exposed wire that we need to coil, therefore they're super strong as well. As you can imagine, this necklace is, um, it's got quite a weight to it. Um, so this is going to give you that lovely uh, strength. Now, when you're th uh, threading these on, I'm going to show you a little top tip, hopefully, to make it a little bit quicker for you as well. I'm going to line up these two lengths of tiger tail and I'm slightly going to stagger it. This will make it easier to put through the holes. I'm going to open it up ever so slightly more, just so I've got some more exposed space. It's just opening that clamshell. In the very middle, you've got um, a hole in the hinge. Somebody's just asking Anne. Anne's just asking what we're making today. We're making twisted necklaces, so torsade necklaces, or torsade, tomato, tomato. Um, we're using beautiful beads. Let me just bring myself up so you can see it. Gorgeous necklaces, multi strands that can be worn either twisted, so you have that lovely collar, or you can untwist them. I'm going to show you my little top tip on keeping them twisted, or you can wear them as multi strand necklaces. So we're just prepping these up now. So, staggering ever so slightly the lengths on the end. This is going to make it easier to go straight through the hinge. So we're going to go one first, followed by the second. It just makes it easier than actually trying to battle with two different. Um, and then we're going to add on two crimp beads as well. I want extra strength in these because, as I said, I'm using quite heavy beads, glass beads. If you're using seed beads, you could do this onto a thread. I was worried about the weight of this, so I've done it onto um, my tiger tail. Okay, so now that I've got these, I'm just going to switch around my grasp so I can thread through with my right hand. I'm then going to take both strands back down through the hole in the middle of the hinge, and this will actually give you a double strand just at the very start. This is going to make all of this super secure again because they are quite heavy. I want it to be really secure. So rather than just finishing with my crimp beads at the end and leaving a little tail, I'm going to fold back over and go back through. 
Um, oh, Natalie says, oh, lovely, something I think I could make. This is a really nice beginner's project or something where you don't have to be totally engrossed. You can just chill out for the day and thread some beads on nice and super simple. Okay, so I'm going to take both of these crimp beads and I'm going to squash them with my flat nose pliers. Can you see now that they're nice and flat? And then the collot is going to come up and you might want to use your pliers just to pull those tails through to get it as near down to that hinge as you can. And we're gonna fold the collot over them. And that's gonna give me a nice hidden and flush, neat finish. These little tails I'm going to keep a hold of. I'm just gonna bring these together up at the top. Just squash that closed ever so slightly. And you can see it hides all of those components. You know you've got extra um, strong strength inside and it still gives you a lovely, neat finish. Now then, with my beads, and this is entirely up to you how long. Oh, Natalie, it would be lovely with gemstone chi uh, chips and crystals. Beautiful. It's just a really nice way of showcasing them because your components are completely exposed. All of those beads have a lovely showcase. You're not hiding any of them. We're going to see all of them. Now, there's a few ways you can thread these on. If you just want to take your time you can use your tiger tail like a needle you could take all of your beads off of your strand they will all come strung on either with the pearls they're on a string on your crystals they're just on a monofilament so you could individually pick them up but as you can see it is going to take a little bit of time but i'm just using my tiger tail as a needle or we can thread straight from the strand and you can actually use your tiger tail Go in through your pearls and it takes a little bit of setup and you can actually push them straight from the strand. I can't ever normally get more than like three or four at a time, but you can push them straight on and then off of your string. Um, Sarah, do you prefer collots or crimp covers? It really does depend on the make. If you were doing something like um, a floating necklace, whereby your crimps are going to uh, suspend your beads, then crimp covers are really lovely because it's just going to give you that nice finish. If you're doing something like this, whereby I need to um, attach a clasp on afterwards, then I think the collots are fantastic because you've also already got your loop on there. So as you can see, it doesn't take too, too long. I'm just holding the beads in my hand suspending them and you can do it so that you're also working down into them gravity will also help that way I can use my tiger tail just like a little needle going through I never normally do sort of more than three because three I can actually hold in my hand and keep them aligned which is really nice you can see I've got probably about three there once you're into that first one just push them along and in they go now, uh, many of you are asking about seed beads. Oh, Joe, of course, miracle beads coming in, Little Miss Rainbow. I need to find you like one of those Mr. Men books, don't we? Little Miss Rainbow. Um, seed beads and miracle beads would look gorgeous. Seed beads are going to be lovely. If you want to use your seed beads, like I said, you could do this onto um, a thread. Make sure it's quite uh, thick. So you're gonna need like a D or an Eslon, something like that. You could even use Fireline um, and such like as well. That will give you a really lovely fluid finish for those lighter beads. And of course you could, for your seed beads, you could use uh, your bead spinner. I just find that um, collots, just going back to our our conversation about crimp covers, um, I just find that collots are a little bit easier to work with. If you're using crimp covers, a lot of the time you have to crimp your crimp bead properly. So uh, squashing it and then folding it in half so that you get it as small as possible. Um, four millimeter, I have rainbow colors of seed beads as well. Yeah, that'd be really lovely. Also, you could be adding in a crystal in between each of these. You could be adding in a seed bead. It's going to be a really nice way of using lots of leftover beads or of course the bundles that we have today. Adding in seed beads and crystals is also going to give you that extra little bit of length as well. So if you want it very heavily twisted, or of course you want to make it um, as a much longer necklace, then that'd be great. And my little trick that I'm gonna show you once we've set up this double strand, I'm not gonna do all six this morning because it'll just take me too long to thread them on. It's probably about an hour, mm, no, it probably took me longer. It was probably about an hour and a half to an hour and 45 minutes prep. Um, 
getting all of your beads on because you're just threading them on individually. Okay, so I'm not gonna bother doing all of them because I think it's just gonna take us too long. But you can see that it really helps when you use your strand. Okay, so that is one of my pearls and then I'm gonna do the same for the crystals. Taking them off, just cutting that first little strand and then taking my tiger tail and picking up a few of these loose ones first of all, just to give me a little bit of my monofilament to hold on to. Again, you can use your tiger tail like a needle, so picking them up individually. I'm just tapping the top of that hole, nudging the bead onto its side, and as you can see, I've got my little felt tablecloth down as well, so straight from your bead mat is gonna make that nice and easy. And then the hole in these ones are slightly larger and the monofilament is thinner. So you should be able to get a really nice run down a good few crystals all in one and just decant these straight on. So you're just using your tiger tail like your needle and threading them on. Once I've got the same length as my pearls on here, I'll show you my nice little neat finishing for tiger tail. A lot of people don't like using tiger tail because you end up with um, gaps in your beadwork if you don't finish it really neatly. So I'm gonna show you how to do that just for that extra professional finish. No sharp edges, no exposed tails, and no exposed wire through the middle either. Now if you've got time and you don't need to do a nice quick make, you can of course be picking up these beads individually. So you could have a couple of hours just as prep and then finishing off, all we need to do is add on some findings. I think it's quite nice sometimes to go back to, um, to basics and just do some nice simple stringing. Thank you, Sarah. This will help me use up some of the old beads that I've collected over the years. Absolutely, and because you're doing lovely multiple strands, it's so nice to use a mixture of beads as opposed to just one. one. One type of bead would still look really lovely, but it's really nice to have that contrast in texture and tones and color. How long is each strand of tiger tail do you recommend? So it's really um, as long as you want your necklace or the uh, length of strands of beads that you are using. Um, so I quite like these to sit as a collar just at the top of... Um, you know, my, my neckline, so a bit, bit more like a choker, uh, because when they're, once they're twisted, for example, like a high neck jumper that I've got on today, it just gives you that lovely collar. So for, for me, I would be making my necklace about 16 to 17 inches, just so it's nice and tight up at my neck. But if you want it a bit longer, you could be doing an 18 or a 20. The twist, depending on how tight you do it, is gonna require about an inch. Um, of extra length. Oh, I've even threaded on far too many of these. So if you get a bit carried away, at this end, I'm going to make sure, just so I've got the right amount of beads, that my beads sit nice and flush up to the top. So I've got that same length. Then I'm going to make sure that I've got the right amount of beads down at the far side as well. So I'm just going to lie these nice and flat next to each other and take off any of my extras. And then just push those down. So you're making sure you've got no gap up at the top and then they're going to be the same length. I think I've got a couple of extra crystals on here. I'll have a look in a sec. Okay, these tails we're going to hide into our first few beads. So this is where we've attached on our collot already. Again, this is going to give you that extra strength. So if there's any stress put on the necklace and if you're twisting them, of course, it's going to make it that little bit tighter. Can you see now that I've got that lovely flush finish up at the top? My pearls are all the way. My tail goes down the first four or five beads. I'm going to do the same on the other side with my crystals, lining them up, just hiding that tail in there. If you're using seed beads, you might find that you can't double them over. You should be able to. You should have a big enough hole. Uh, but if you're using your seed beads, you might be using a thread as well, in which case that'd be absolutely fine. Just pop your needle onto the end of these tails. So leave it long enough that you can attach your needle on and double that thread over. And then you can hide those in. Now this one I'm just gonna cut off nice and flush to the beads and then I can push this up. Now if you're using any larger beads in these, these pearls are six mil, you can see my little tail has come out of the crystal, uh, the pearl there, so I'm gonna cut that one off as well. 
rather than fussing about with him. I've got three uh, beads of a tail in there, so that's absolutely fine. So now I can push this all the way to the end and we're gonna secure this side as well. Just make sure that you've got, so I've kind of got one extra bead there, so I'm gonna remove that one. And then we're gonna do the same as we did at the very beginning. I'm going to take a collotte, just open that hinge up ever so slightly more. And again, I've staggered these lengths of tiger tail to make it easy to go through. One of my collots, two crimp beads. Oh, that one doesn't want to go on. And again, just by staggering the length of your tiger tail, it will save you having to battle with two of them at once. So I'm gonna go one in there. And then the next, you'll see that when I add my second um, strand I'm pushing the bead up onto my finger which will expose all of that hole and then you can just slide it through it makes it nice and easy right then down to my work so I'm taking the collotte down to the bottom Got one crimp bead in there already there's my two and then I'm going to take my tail I'm just going to cut off a little bit from this because they're a bit too long folding it back down through the hinge itself and down into my work. Now at this point, before I tighten anything up and just make sure that your other end hasn't become exposed, you're not pulling any of that tiger tail through, <clears throat> I'm gonna bury my tail into my first few beads. I'm gonna tighten that one up ever so slightly. And then I'm gonna do the same with the pearls. Just through the first few. And this is immediately giving us that hidden tail before I've crimped it. So I've still got all that lovely working space. And bringing it down. Now then you want to make sure that there's no gap. So I'm just pushing all of those down, making sure that my other end is nice and neat. And then we're ready to tighten it up. Now you can either use your round nose pliers, you could use a head or an eye pin. I'm going to put my pliers in that little gap. So I'm not, I'm not holding it. I'm just using one tooth of my round nose pliers to hold this. And then I'm pulling this tail. So I'm pulling that extra tail nice and tight. And what that's going to start to do is sink this. And I'm just going to bring the crimp beads right down to the bottom of the collotte because that will then give me all of that exposed space. If you don't have the strength in your hands, take your flat nose pliers and just pull these tails. And you want to pull it until you have no gap. Now I can see I've just got a tiny little, because it was the width of my pliers, I've got a tiny little loop in there, so I'm just gonna pull those through and then you're ready to crimp your beads. So I'm just going in with the very corner of my flat nose pliers, which will get me nice and tight up to both of those, and then close your crimp cover over, or your collot over. And then I've got my exposed tails that I can cut off. I know that then they are hidden in my work, and it's gonna give me a lovely flush finish. So pulling up with the strand, pushing down with your cutters, and that's gonna give you a lovely finish on both ends. Now obviously this one's teeny tiny just because I'm not threading the beads on but this would be perfect for a bracelet. So then you can twist these strands and it's going to give you a lovely professional finish, no gap in any of these and we'll attach on at the ends. Now then, finishing them all off. So you're going to do that three times over. I'm just going to take my clasp off here so that I can attach it back on for you and then we'll get into the fun bit of twisting making sure that we can twist these necklaces without them coming undone. And it's such a simple little trick, but it's really neat. Okay, so you're gonna do it so that you've got three sets of two. So I've got two, four, six, and they're all into individual collots. And then I'm gonna take a six millimeter jump ring. You could use smaller if you wanted, and my large uh, magnetic clasps. Taking my jump ring, so I've just opened this up, and I'm gonna thread on through my collot. One, 
to I'm just going to expose some of that space. So I'm holding it right up in the corner, making sure I've got the majority of that jump ring exposed so I can add all three on. You could even do more strands if you wanted. Just use a larger jump ring so that you've got the space. And then we're going to close this off. So I'm just twisting it together, making sure I have that lovely closed loop. And then I've got all strands all together, but I've got that movement. If I were to put more than two onto one collot, it's just going to be too tight. The beads won't sit nicely. If you're using bigger beads, just use um, a couple of centimetres to bring it down. And then that's going to be my multi-strand. So having this as um, a normal necklace is going to be really lovely. And of course, the magnetic clasps make it super simple. You've got all those strands on there. Now, if you want to twist it, there's a couple of ways. You can either just twist them in your hands. So twisting it and rotating it around, and you could do this every time you wear it. And then of course, putting it onto your neck and having it like so. But as you wear it, and as this moves, the twists become looser because it's a round clasp at the back, it might rotate round. You're going to lose some of your twist. So I'm actually going to twist this one up here so that you can see. To make sure that the twist will stay, I've got a really neat trick. So I'm going to take one side of my clasp and I'm going to separate two of my beads on the far side. And I'm going to take my clasp and I'm going to bring it through those two strands. Now I'm going to return the other way going through another two strands. So I'm separating two different sets of beads. Then I'm going to separate another two on the far side and come through. Separate another two and come through. And can you see it's beginning to twist? Separate another two and come through. If you want more of a twist, separate another two and come through. Another two. And go through now if you get a little knot like this just drag it through separate another two and through and again you might get these little knots so just make sure that you separate them out just pick two individual strands each time and you'll see it's starting to twist now where this crystal strand I've obviously got one larger bead on there uh, or one extra bead is a little bit stronger so I'm just going to make sure I go through that a few times to tighten it up and as you can see, you start to get a twist. Now this won't come undone. You can do it as many times as you like to get as neater and tighter finish as you require. And now when you're wearing it, this isn't going to come undone and it looks so pretty. So you can take it off, you can put it in your bags, you can put it in your jewelry box. It's not going to untwist at all and it looks so neat. Um, it is going to give you more of a sort of plaited finish uh, than if you are just twisting it by hand. But that now means that it's not going to come undone at all while I'm wearing it. So you can wear it all day. I would twist it up a little bit more just so that I can hide some of these individual strands. And you can actually undo it as well. So... I'm just going to go a little bit tighter so you can see why having a little bit of a longer strand is better because you can then keep on twisting it as tight as you want it to go it just looks so pretty and then if I lie this flat for you so you can see where I've got um, some it's because I knocked it sorry where I've got some tighter twists up here you can just spread those beads out allow those little wrapped over beads to travel up and that's going to give you a really lovely finish. Neaten it all up. Make sure all those strands are going to sit nicely. And you've got a gorgeous twisted necklace. You can undo your twist as well. So if you've worn it like this and then you would like it to be um, individual strands again, you're just going to take these and start to loop it through. So you'll just find a twist bring your clasp through and this will start to undo it and then you can go back to having and this is why tight I prefer using tiger tail because it's very hardy um, I'm not going to undo it um, or break it as I'm putting all of this stress onto it 
and pulling it tighter and tighter. So then you can start to undo it and you will have your individual strands back again. It's just a nice way of doing it, making sure that um, it's not gonna untwist because there's nothing more frustrating than putting it on and thinking, yep, that looks great, I'm happy with that. And within sort of 20 minutes, half an hour, you've got your individual necklace again. So there you go, you can untwist all of that. So it's a really versatile necklace that you can wear so many different ways and probably each time you wear it, it's gonna look a little bit different. Um, really hope you enjoyed it. Such a nice, simple make today, matching our memory wire bangles that we had back in the summer. So if you've got some of those lovely bundles of beads, you can now start making your necklace to match your bracelets as well. Um, now, I am back with you on Friday. I can't stop playing with it. Um, I'm gonna be back with you on Friday when I'm also going to make a matching necklace for the bangles that we did last Friday. So we were using the gorgeous semi-precious beads and we had the lovely agate, made a wire wrapped memory wire bangle, catchy title. Um, so these were the ones that we did on Friday. If you missed that, you can go over to our Facebook page and have a little look. I'm gonna make a lovely pendant necklace to be able to go with those as well. Um, Sarah, how did you come up with that? Oh, it's an age, it's an age old technique. Um, it's just one that not many people know. Um, so it's a really lovely trick um, just to be able to keep them twisted. Uh, but yeah, a lot of the time people don't like sharing their, uh, their secrets, do they? But not here, we'll tell you as much as we can. <laughs> um, so I will see you all on Friday. Have a lovely week. Kitty will be with you tomorrow. Sarah Payne on Wednesday and um, like I said, I'll be back on Friday with our lovely wire wrapping as well. Nice for beginners as well. Don't be intimidated by wire wrapping. I'm going to make it nice and simple for you. And um, we'll be able to uh, broaden those skills you have. Um, thank you, Lucy. She says, lovely, lovely tutorial. Thank you so much. Say that fast, Camille. I can't. <laughs> too tongue-tied yes joanne check out the website for the tutorials it's really really lovely um oh linda says sorry about the sad faces it's not meant it's my tablet i know sometimes that slide of the finger and you put the wrong face hey eh? whenever i get angry faces on these i just assume it's a slip of a finger <laughs> um lovely take care everybody have a great week i will see you on friday um stay safe and keep beading see you soon